In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning, everyone. The general theme of this week of the Holy Lent is about enlightenment through baptism and repentance. Enlightenment through baptism and repentance. The Church presents to us this week, every day, a different message about enlightenment through the readings of the daily liturgies. Today's message is about witnessing to the Christ. Is about witnessing to the Christ through enlightenment. And you might wonder how uh, witnessing to the Christ is linked to enlightenment. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, when we receive enlightenment from the Lord through baptism or repentance, we receive a ray of divine wisdom that allow us to see more, to understand more, to know more. This triggers a spontaneous reaction inside us to take an action. This action is witnessing to the Christ. Best example to illustrate this is the encounter that the Samaritan woman had with Jesus. The Samaritan woman had a conversation with Jesus and at a certain point she proclaimed him as the Messiah, the Creator, the Savior. At this point she received enlightenment, she was triggered spontaneously to go back to town, talk to the people there about Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, the Creator. And it's an important point to make here that it's only when she proclaimed him as a Creator that she received this enlightenment because the, converse, the conversation started uh, with uh, the Samaritan woman thinking Jesus is um, a, a good teacher, uh, a prophet, but it's only when she proclaimed him as the Messiah, the Savior, that she received this enlightenment and she was triggered to go and witness to the Christ. That exact same message is illustrated very clearly in today's uh, gospel reading of the Holy Liturgy. Uh, it's a very short reading, four verses, very focused message. Jesus starting asking his disciples who the crowd say I am, who the crowd say I am. And the disciples answered, some think uh, you are uh, John the Baptist, others say Elijah, um, uh, one of the prophets, but Jesus did not settle for this. He asked them further, who do you think I am? And we all know St. Peter proclaimed and said, you are the Christ. And that was the answer Jesus was waiting for. That they proclaim him as the Messiah, the Savior, the Christ. With this answer, Jesus commissioned them to wait until he fulfilled salvation. And then they go and provide this witness to the whole entire world, to the whole nations both in case of the Samaritan woman and in case of the disciples, only when Jesus saw they proclaim him as the Messiah, the Savior, that he provided the enlightenment for them to give witness for him. Not as a nice guy who's doing, who's helping people or uh, a saintly man doing miracles or a prophet, the Messiah, the Savior. That's how we can provide witness to the Christ. That's how we receive the enlightenment to provide witness to the Christ. Now, as the church presents to us this reading about the encounter of Jesus Christ with his disciples and asking them that question, in, and that was the, the, the reading of the, 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 the gospel reading of the liturgy, the church presents, us to, presents to us also another scenario, a very different encounter, in the gospel reading of Matins of today's liturgy as well. It's a very different encounter. Jesus was uh, teaching in the synagogue in the Nazareth. Jesus grew up in the Nazareth and the reaction of the crowd was very different. Uh, the people in the Nazareth, they rejected him. They dismissed him. Um, they even wanted to kill him. Even Jesus did not ask them, who you think I am? They volunteered to reject him. And we all know that Jesus grew up in the Nazareth, so the people of the Nazareth are his own, similar to when we say the disciples are his own, both are his own. And maybe the church is presenting to us 
these two scenarios, these very contrasting two scenarios, to get us to ask ourselves a question, where do we position ourselves? We claim we are Jesus' own, we are Christians. Are we positioning ourselves with the Nazareth people or with the disciples? And we need to position ourselves with the disciples and proclaim him as a creator and as a savior to be able to witness to him to the world. Now, if we do that, if we proclaim Jesus as the ruler on our life, how can we um, witness to him in the Lord? There are two ways described to us in the readings. One in the Pauline, uh, St. Paul's uh, first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 14. He was solving a little problem, uh, a local problem in that church, but the underlying message he's sending to that church is telling them, you need to pray with one accord. You need to pray with one accord in order to witness to the Christ. And that message is for us today. We need to pray together with one accord to witness to the Christ. When we pray with one accord, with one heart, we illustrate the Savior work in us. The unity of heart, that's the Savior work, that's the Messiah's work. We proclaim him as the Savior and the Messiah on our lives, praying with one accord. This can happen on several levels, on a, the family level. We always hear about the family altar. The family altar is a oneness of heart of this family offering praises to the Lord, like what we pray in the Holy Liturgy in the hymn of Through the Intercessions. And we finish saying, uh, a mercy of peace, a sacrifice of praise. A mercy of peace, a sacrifice of praise. Praising is a sacrifice that the family altar offer to the Lord that praying with one accord on, on the level of servants serving one initiative or the whole congregation like what we do now using online tools, praying with one accord is offering the sacrifice of praise. This is witnessing to the Christ. Another method was described in the Catholic epistle, uh, which is from St. James chapter one. He says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Religion at that point, as St. James described it, was actually uh, the gospel, was the witnessing for the Christ. They were not called Christian yet. They were the group who presents the witness to the Christ. So witnessing to the Christ to him was um, looking after orphans and widows in their distress. In our today world, uh, we will say we need to take care of one another. Taking care of one another is witnessing to the Christ based on St. James' advice and St. James' epistle. Um, I'm not uh, uh, pointing only to the materialistic needs which we were and we should continue to do before, during and after Corona, but I'm also talking about the emotional needs. In, in this pandemic distress, um, we all need a message of hope, a message of faith, a message of support. And I encourage you all to pick up the phone, call your friends and family, the close one and the distant one, and, ones, and provide this message of hope, this message of faith. Christ, the creator, the savior, the Messiah, who created the eyes to the born blind, he will have the solution. We have that faith. This is witnessing to the Christ. So um, to sum up, I, I hope all of us ask that question to ourselves, the question of Jesus Christ, who we think Jesus Christ is. And I hope we can all proclaim and say he is the Messiah, like the Samaritan woman and the disciples. I hope, I pray, we can all um, witness to the Christ through praying with one accord on a family level, on a servant's level, on a congregation level. And we can also witness to the Lord through taking care of one another, not only the materialistic needs, but also the emotional needs to friends and family. Uh, I wish you all uh, a very uh, blessed day full of peace. Uh, please pray for me and for the service, uh, and may the Lord be glorified forever and ever. Amen.